Okay, so let's get going with Canva for nonprofits. They help to empower entrepreneurs and nonprofits reach their goals by creating efficient digital workplaces. I offer training and project management assistance and consulting and software selection and consulting. I do a lot of webinars and workshops, and I, I don't think I've ever encountered an issue like this where everything is just gone wrong. So this is a bit of a first for me, but that's okay. I also offer digital workplace assessments. If that's something you're interested in, we could talk about that later. But for today, I really want to get to talking about Canva and helping you guys realize how you can use it in your nonprofit to uh, create amazing projects and contents. Uh, Canva does have a program for nonprofits. So if you go to canva.com slash Canva for nonprofits, you can learn more about their program and how to get Canva for free. Most nonprofits that are able to prove their nonprofit should be able to uh, access this. And so for today, I'm not going to go into every single nitty gritty detail about Canva because there is a lot I could actually probably um, spend a good three, four hours talking about all the details and features of Canva. What I wanted to focus on more for this session is to show you guys how you can use it as a nonprofit and some of the different types of projects you can use it for. So one being presentations. So we'll take a look at a few different presentations and how you can use them. And second, we'll look at some videos and how you can create your own videos or slide animated slideshows that you can use to share either on social or provide information to donors or volunteers or anybody else about your organization. And then at the end, we'll take a look at some other tips and tricks and things that we can do with those designs. So to get started, now, hopefully you can all see my screen. Okay. I'm trying to not maximize it. Yes. I wanted to expand to presentation mode. I am going to try it now because it's, I, I think the issue was on, it's not for, I think the issue was going into presentation was because live streams. So let me try that again, because I do want you guys to see the presenter mode and see how it works in the end as well. So I'm just going to refresh the screen here and see those options come. It's to be a little slow, so like a lot of graphics and things. Usually, when I'm on my own, the choosing. Let's try it. And I never had an issue. And ha just having other sessions and haven't had an issue. So I'm not sure what the deal is today, but <laughs> it doesn't want to cooperate with me, but I will try to make this. It is going to prove to be difficult to show you what I want to show you because <laughs> it is interactive. And I did want to do a lot of demos, but it doesn't want to work. Okay. Going. So some surprise will work. I have the option to share in presenter mode animations to me. In this slide, this is actually um, all these people that you saw that were waving their arms were actually uh, a video element, but I, let's see how it goes. This is the type It doesn't want to cooperate with me. Oh, maybe. maybe. So far, defaulted to present and record. So uh, the benefit of doing this is uh, to do for something you may want to think of doing live. In the bottom corner, and I won't go to the recording studio because it just might mess everything up. If I were to go there, I could walk through this presentation myself as I was speaking and it would show up in the little bubble here, and then I could save it and export it as an MP as a link and provide it to uh, somebody to watch at some point. I find that this present and record is really great for adding personalization. So if you have a presentation deck that you want to go through and maybe introduce somebody to your organization, or it's an onboarding program and you're looking to show whoever you're onboarding, whether it's an, uh, an employee, a volunteer, a new donor, you can have yourself talking. So it becomes a lot more personal and you can even have, if your presentation is short, you can actually just personalize the entire thing. You use the same template, hit the recording studio, and you can start talking 
about anything specific to that person. Hey, Jane Doe, we're great to have you as part of this team. You're going to be reporting to this person. That person is a great way to do a quick personalization and send it. But I'm going to try to go back and present with presenter view. Right now you're seeing the back end, well, back end, the presenter view in my entire desktop and not just the screen that your audience would typically see. So if you were doing this live audience window screen, which I know it all looks black right now, but you can, there we go. Little window is on that control. So right now I'm moving this over to my second monitor, so you won't see it. So what happened is I would move this to another presenter view. So I have all of my slides. I can't edit my slide. Yeah. Audience. The. Kind of. Control how it's added at you can click on any of your slide a different uh, and you can. Other slide should appear. Very slow for me today. Change slide. You can. And when you're in your, uh, your design view, you, you, uh, kind of at the bottom. Other tips here, uh, that's how you would highlight and let you scroll a bit. I'm not sure if you can see it. It's probably a little bit small on your screen section. You have this live section. Uh, it works similar um, to Perfect, where you can provide your attendees with a short link and they can um, ask questions and answers. And you can use that panel there to display their questions and answers. The time you have a chat really be feature. Uh, you're a big screen for people who are actually sitting there in a room. Uh, if you use that, uh, Campbell. Phones or if they're on their own laptops or mobile devices, they can and, and you can see it on your presentation view. Is there his questions more anonymously? Need you. And I really apologize if this is slow slow because I can't show half of what I wanted to show uh, because of that. And I don't know. I think they're so slow. A feature can, you can uh, collaborate with others. So if you're working on a presentation with your team, you can add comments and you can add, mention them. My, this is my admin assistant and I can ask her to find facts about something and add it to the slide or change the layout of this slide or whatever it is I need to ask them for, ask them for feedback. You can also assign it to them. That way you can keep track of anything assigned to them as well. So that's a great way to collaborate on a slides. Let me see if I can actually get through here to 
a few other points. Okay. So what I had wanted to talk about before I tried actually presenting this slide. So I apologize. I'm a little bit all over the place here. All right. The sound is in and out and it's hard to follow. I am sorry. Okay. Let me see if I can change my, it might be the microphone. Let me see. Can you guys still hear me? Is this sound better? Hopefully the sound is better. I think it was uh, connecting to, okay, good. Sorry. I think it was connected to my video camera instead of my headset. So the sound quality wasn't as great. <laughs> I think I might need to redo this entire presentation from scratch again. Uh, maybe I'll rebook it again later in the fall, but we'll get through what we can for today. Right, so getting started with Canva. So before we jumped into presentations, one of the things I wanted to talk about was some tips on how to get started with creating in Canva. So whatever project it is you're going to be working on, if it's going to be a presentation, a video, a flyer, whatever it is, these are five tips that I try to follow when I start creating. So the first thing is to get ready. So make sure what it is you want to create. So if you're creating a presentation for donors, for example, try to think about what is your goal? What is it you want them to get out of the presentation or project? What is the information they need to come away with from looking at your uh, design? So even if it's a social media post and it's only going to be one slide or one image, what is the message you really clearly need to get across? And in doing that, don't just think about what are the words that need to show up on the screen. Like maybe you're promoting an event and you want to show that the event is a certain date and time. Obviously that's information that needs to appear there. But some other things you might want to think about is the feeling or emotion. Like how do you want somebody to feel when they look at your design? Do you want them to come away feeling, oh, that, that was so inspiring? Or do you want them to feel a little bit sad and intrigued in trying to connect with something? And I, I know that's maybe a bit of a difficult concept to get your head around, but think of, think of how you feel when you look at different advertisements or graphics and how they make you feel. And that might help you with the whole design process in Canva. And, and I guess to step back a bit because I've got sidetracked by my technology issues. I, I just, so you all know, I am not a graphic designer. I'm a small business owner. I've worked with technology for a long time. I love technology. I can appreciate visual design, but I am not a graphic. And that is one of the great things about Canva is you don't need to be a graphic designer in order to use it. You just need to have the idea. And there is so much in here that can help you create that design and bring it to life that anybody can really do it. So ready, get those ideas for your design. And step two is inspiration. And while I talk about inspiration, I'm going to see if I can load uh, Canva again and show you some of the inspiration. But when you're, we're talking about inspiration, maybe you're getting inspiration from other things you've done or looking at how other nonprofits maybe have done something. But one of the great ways to get inspiration for something is to one, know what you're looking for, which you've done by getting ready. And two is looking at some of these templates that Canva has. When you're first logged into Canva here, you can see quickly, you, you can access all the templates right from here from what will you design. If you already have an idea of what you want to do, so we were looking at some presentations, you can search by there and it'll start bringing you template ideas or you can actually search for something. So maybe you're looking to do an event flyer. If you search for event flyer, this will bring you a ton of inspiration. So you can take a look through everything that Canva has here, obviously, and pick something that inspires you. Pick something that gives you that feeling that you want your whoever's consuming your graphic to feel. So if you're doing a sporting event, obviously this baseball night one would be a great template to use because it already has that kind of layout and those elements and graphics. If you're going for a fun vibe, this upcoming event looks really great. If you're doing something more for kids and technology related, this robo 
Technics one looks like a, a good option. Find something that really resonates with you. And then the great thing about Canva is you can edit all of it. There's been lots of times where I've taken a template and it looks like this and I end up changing it to something completely different. But that comes back to the design part, which we'll talk about next. Uh, once you've found that inspiration, and I highly recommend, especially if you're starting out with uh, Canva, is to use a template and then build your design off of that. So when you get to the design part, this is where we're talking about changing and any of those elements on the screen, customizing your font. Uh, you can easily change your font to anything that you're to reflect that look and feel that you're looking for. So if I'm looking for something maybe a little more elegant, maybe I would change my font to something uh, more script based. You can change all of your colors. A uh, great tip with Canva is if I wanted to change all of the colors in my presentation at once, so say I want to change this teal color to more of a blue color, I can select my new blue color. And if you scroll down to the bottom here, and I'm not sure if you can see it, I know it's, I'm not using full screen, but you can actually change all of those old colors to the new color, which is really great to easily change one of those templates that you might find. We'll, I'll try to pull up some other presentations in a bit and we'll see if we can fool around with a bit more of the design before I move on. But the next step would be to review everything you've done. So once you've tweaked the template, you've uh, updated your fonts and you've uh, updated the content with what's relevant for you, you would need to review everything. So a uh, tip there is to make sure you're aligning everything properly. So you can see that all of these uh, buttons here are aligned in a nice straight row. And that was done by aligning everything. Now you need to be careful when you're aligning things. In this example here, all of these elements are separate. So I've got the one, I've got the circle, I've got the text, I've got this long bar on, on here as well. Now this long bar is actually more than just one graphic. It's actually two, I think. So if I take this oops, and move it. So when I click here, if you look up here, it says group or ungroup. So if I ungroup this, you'll see that this is actually a rectangle and a circle. And that's how this element was created. If I click the undo button up here in the top left, I can undo that so I can put it back in the right spot. So grouping items together. So I'm going to group that back again and bring this back here. And you can see as well, as I move things around, you can see if things aligned or not. And all these little numbers show up, which actually I have never seen happen before. So I'm not sure if that's a new feature, but you can see how everything is aligned by that pink pinkish line that shows up it'll show you what it's aligning to so i'm going to align this back up to here okay and now um getting everything aligned properly so i'm going to misalign this a little bit just so we can see how this will work and say we've created this design it's all misaligned we want it to be nice and neat and tidy if we select everything we can Go to position and then we can change how this is aligned. So we can align everything to match along the top or the left or the right or the middle, um, or we can space it. Now, what it's doing though, or what it will do is align every single individual element based on what you select. So say I want to align these all to the left. If I click left right now, I'll show you what happens. All of those elements have gone to the left, the number, the circle, the square, everything. That's obviously not how we want it to look. So I'm going to undo that. And in order to get each of these items aligned to the left, we need to group them all together first. So if I select everything in this top one and I hit group, this is now going to act as one element. I can click it and drag it and move it, and it's going to essentially act as one. And if I do that with each of these, then I'm going to have five individual elements that I can now align instead of 12 or 15 or more. Okay, so now these are individually grouped. So now if I select them all again and I align them to the left, 
they will all align to the left nicely spaced. The other way we can align these, we can see that there's a nice big gap here between one and two. If we align them vertically, they'll automatically get spaced nicely. And then I can drag and drop, and now I can decide where and how I, I want to align that as well. And I'll align this to be flush against the middle of the page, and I can tell it's aligning against the entire page because there's a solid line that's going from one end of the page to the other. So hopefully that makes sense. I see a question here, but how do you check AODA compliance on Canva? I'm not aware of any built-in items for AODA. I want to say that sometimes it provides options for visibility, and I know I've seen it before, but I might be thinking of a different program and you know, I don't think there's anything in here. I, I don't think there's anything built in that will check against for AODA compliance. I would expect that you likely need to either export this as a PDF or use or share it as a link. So if you share this and you get a view only link, there should be AODA software or checkers out there. And I believe there's some free tools, if I'm not mistaken, out there for AODA compliance. And you may be able to take this tool and put it in there to check on compliance. But as far as I recall, unless anybody else is aware and wants to chime in, I don't think there's anything built in. You can check and see if there are any add-in for compliance, but it, it might be called something different than AODA. I'll, I'll take a look after this call and see if I can find anything, because that's a really good question, and I'm curious to know the answer, but that would be my tip if there isn't anything built in for AODA. All right, so moving along, so that's some tips on reviewing your design and making sure things are aligned. You also want to keep enough white space is what they call it around so that everything stands out a bit better so the more you clutter your slide the less the less impact your words are going to have as well so designing presentations in canva we've touched on some of it and we've looked at this as well i had some other samples and i'll try to pull them up but these were some great and these are templates right from with that's how you as a nonprofit can find templates in here and just tweak them for your own needs so this is it's a charity talk for a nonprofit and layout that you go in and it already gives you uh, ideas as to what to include. There's an about our foundation page, you put in a little blurb about your foundation and, and learn more. You can either use this button or link page Decker's presentation actually create. If I select this slide or even the button, actually, I think what would probably be better is to group them. So now that they're grouped, it doesn't matter where somebody clicks, if they click on the text or the button and add the link up here in the top. And you can have this go, as I mentioned, to any other page in the document, or you can uh, enter an external link to your website, perhaps. So the benefit with that is if you were to share this as a PDF or share it as a link and somebody is viewing it online, they can quickly get to wherever they need to. So yeah, so this is a great presentation example for something in your uh, charity. And as I mentioned, you can quickly change the branding here. Uh, so say your color isn't this brown, your color is, let's go with pink, isn't great, but I can now change all of that brown. So if you look at the bottom here, you can see all the little tiles for the slide and you can see how everything is brown. And once I click this change all, you see everything changes to pink. So that's a nice, easy way to update an existing template to your own branding. And again, it comes with all these default slides that you can then just update and you're good to go. Another template is a something you could use for a donor presentation and these are all searchable in uh, canva and the templates if you just type in charity or nonprofit, i think this one i uh, searched for donor presentation and uh, this was one of the top ones that came up so here's an and again it's got all these great slides that make it a nice looking slide to 
your donors or anyone else you might be looking to chat to your organization about your and add and move everything around here, which is great. We've, you know, maybe your organization isn't um, related to the environment. And so you want to change these pictures for behind your cops. So in the left here, and I haven't gone it into this in too much detail, but you can go to photos and say your cause is, I don't know, let's, let's say cancer, breast cancer. We can easily change these images by just dragging and dropping anything that we want. Now, if you notice, uh, the color, the pictures here are in color and the pictures here are in black and white. And that's because there's a lot you can do with images within Canva itself. One of the things you can do is change the transparency which isn't what was edited here, but I can basically make this darker or lighter so that whatever's behind it shows through more. But what likely happened here is there's some black and white filter probably that's on this image by default. There's the saturation here is where I'm adjusting it. So as you can see, I'm adjusting this so more of the color is now coming out. And these there are a whole bunch of settings in here that allow you to edit your image one of the there, there is a background remover but it's part of the paid plan so i won't go into that but there's all these smart mock-ups there's a whole bunch of things you can play with to make your graphics really pop so say i wanted to put this image in something like this oh, i changed that the wrong way oops so this is going to put I'm just moving stuff around so that you can see this once it loads. It takes a little bit. As you can see, it's pretty easy and intuitive to use everything here and drag, drop, move things around. Um, so now you can see that original image went inside this other image because of the frame we chose. And there's a whole bunch of neat little things there. But some other thoughts here. Again, you can change everything. Charts and graphs are probably going to be a great uh, tool for you to use, whether you're doing an infographic or you're doing some sort of report like this. Uh, different charts available. So this one here is an example of a pie chart and you can find that in elements. If you search for chart under elements, you'll find a whole bunch of different types of infographics that you can use and you can edit all the settings here. So I can change this to a fundraising, like maybe you're showing your budgeting information, fundraising, let's fundraising, and maybe that is 25% and this is, oh my goodness, I can't type, donations, and this is 30 maybe. Um, so you can tweak everything you need to here and it'll update your graph here. Right now it's just on a black color, but we can change it to whatever we like. So it's, it looks a bit prettier. And let's see what else do we have. Again, different templates for you to use. This is the benefit of using templates is it helps give you ideas of how to lay out your information as well. And then all you have to do is tweak what you need. I showed you dragging and dropping pictures. Okay. So let's move on and talk to videos. I've got nine minutes left. So that was presentations. Now you can convert any presentation into a video or you can start with an actual video template. So let me start by showing you how to convert a existing presentation into a video. So right now, this is a presentation. I've given you a quick look at how to present, uh, use the presentation features, but each of these slides can have animations added to them. So this image here of a whole bunch of circles, I can actually choose to animate that individual element in a variety of ways. So I can have it rise, I can pan, stomp, pop, a whole bunch of different options here. And so let's just say I'm going to make it that and I can animate everything. I can animate these pictures or I can click off of the slide. And I can actually animate the entire page. So this page is being faded in. I can change that to stopping or rising, whatever I like. So essentially what this is doing is adding some visual appeal to my presentation. So if we were just presenting live and I were to load this slide next, it would do that little animation and it would last for about five seconds, but it's not going to change until I move to my next slide. If I wanted to, convert this presentation into a video, 
I may want some of these slides to actually last longer. So for example, this slide here has quite a bit of text on it. By default, the animation is only going to last five seconds. So if I try to save this presentation as a video file, it's going to be too quick for anybody to actually read all of this information. So I would want to change the timing on this slide to be quite a bit longer. So I might want 10 seconds or 15 seconds, whatever that timing is to allow the person enough time to go from this slide to another slide. The other way to take your presentation and convert it into more of a video and make it a little bit more visually appealing, because if I were to present this slide, it would just quickly blur, pan, or zoom in, and then I would have to sit here and read it. One nice little tip is to take a video. Here in my left panel, I can search for a whole bunch of videos, and there's quite a bit that's available for free here. And I can pick any video I like and drag and drop it onto my page. Obviously, you'd pick something that's relevant to your charity and just add it here in the corner. And a lot of these videos just have a little bit of movement to give a little bit of interest. So the slide isn't like completely boring and it feels a bit more like a video. So this one actually doesn't show much movement at all because it's just a few waves going. But for the example of the one that I had used earlier, you have everybody waving their hands. So it just adds a little bit of visual appeal when you're it as a video. People can read it, but there's still some movement. It's a nice little way to add some interest to your videos. You can also add sound. So under audio, you can drag and drop or you can just select any type of sound and I won't add it. Uh, a blank screen, you can have some back noise going through your video if that's the type of video it is. Um, videos. To save and export any of your work, Nope, that wants to get stuck. So let's go back here. To save and export any of your work, you would go up here in the top left to share. Use if you want to share it internally with your organization, with anybody who might be a member of your team, um, or you can share it uh, via link. So you can share it with anyone with the link and copy the link and share the link, or you can uh, do all sorts of other things with it. So we saw the present. The Panda Doc is a digital signature application. It's something separate from Canva, but I have mine connected through, like I've logged in to connect the two together. So if I had a contract or a membership form, perhaps that I've created in Canva, I can send it to PandaDocs and then have fields added in PandaDocs. It's similar to a DocuSign so that I can send it to have it filled out. View only link. And uh, what I wanted to talk about was download. Depending on type of product, you will these, these 10 available with most of your products. Animations can thank you for video. So, again, we're making sure you're you can say GIF or GIF, save it, and then enjoy the whole PDF. So, the Jeep, so if you receive it in the top PNG, you can choose. Save if you want to save them all, um, or just a couple. This comes in handy if yes. you have maybe everything in one presentation, but it gets tweaked depends on depending on who it goes to. So maybe you have a presentation, your organization, like an intro to your organization, but you have different slides that you want to include for volunteers versus donors versus something maybe that you're submitting for a grant proposal. Uh, you may add different pages. So you can keep everything in one project, but save it and export it uh, to either to PDF or as an image based on selecting each of the individual slides. So I'm at about time and I was, we've already gone through the demo. I had a few tips in here for creating videos, which I can share with you guys later. The one other thing I did want to mention is that you can actually create your own QR codes. So if uh, you're looking to do any print materials for whatever, maybe in-person event, because you've probably seen these everywhere. You just enter the URL of where you want that QR code to go to, and you generate your code, and then you can add this to any of your designs. And then when you print it out, it can be used. So I wanted to show that because that would, that's handy for getting things printed some other ideas the printed materials the membership or volunteer forms if you do a search in the templates for a membership form or uh, order form you'll 
get a nice little template uh, so that you can create your own digital forms. Again, you'll likely need to use something like a DocuSign or Panda Docs to have somebody more easily fill out that information, um, unless you are just printing them, if that's possible as well. So that brings me to the end of uh, my presentation. And I apologize again for the technical issues and everything that happened there, but hopefully you got enough information and have a bit more of an understanding on Canva. These are just some of my end slides. I do, I am holding sessions on live on LinkedIn. I'm probably going to be doing them once a month uh, where you can ask me any questions system related, not just Canva. And if you're interested, follow me on LinkedIn or subscribe on my website. But if you have any questions about this or anything else, or if you'd like to let me know what you might like to see next, you can either leave me a message in the chat. If you want to, if you want me to redo another session on Canva, um, or focus on something a bit more specific on Canva. If you're still around, drop me a message in the chat or in the comments if you're watching this after the fact or send me an email. I'm open to doing any other sessions if, if it's Google Workspace. I know a lot of nonprofits are using Google for nonprofits. So if there's anything there you're interested in seeing, let me know. I'm also uh, considering doing a session maybe later in the fall on how to create an efficient digital workspace for nonprofits. Any ideas you have for me, please let me know. I love to give back and I love to try to help people find great tools to use so that you guys can go on and do good things. So let me cut that out. And with that, we're going to wrap it up. And I hope to see you all at our next session in June with Omer.